So I tried network marketing for 30 days and after that, literally everything changed. More with that after the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vassil here. Welcome to this video. Before we actually begin, I remind you that several spots have opened up for this week's free workshop where it is the fastest and the easiest way to make money online. We literally have a 62 year old woman go from zero to 160 grand in 90 days. Check it out in the workshop below. But guys, this is uh, pretty sentimental because uh, network marketing was intense, man. And I think it was the thing that initially opened up my mind to entrepreneurship. It's kind of like what broke my entrepreneurship virginity. But I did not expect all of these crazy things to happen within the first 30 days. So this story essentially rewind back to when I was a freshman in college, right? And it was around this time that I wanted to become a dentist. So my entire life, you know, it's like they told me, Mike, you're gonna be Filipino, so when you're gonna be older, you have to be a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, a lawyer, or we were just gonna completely disown you. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't wanna get disowned. So I was on this path to become a dentist, right? Little did I know, going to this specific college in uh, this little small little farm, village town in Wisconsin, would completely change my life. Because it, was, because it was in this moment that I got recruited for a network marketing company. Now for those that don't know what a network company is, it's essentially like you building a sales team and the sales team builds a sales team and that sales team builds a sales team and you all sell products and you can make different variant of commissions based off of other people. And it completely sucked for the first, I think, week when I got into it when I was younger because all of my friends thought I was in a pyramid scheme. I didn't even know what that was. It was so freaking weird, man. And I think it led to, I think, some of the most darkest periods of my time. So let me just break down the first 30 days, okay? So here I was, oblivious to entrepreneurship, thinking that you always had to work for somebody else to get paid. And then somebody stops me. He's like, hey man, join this meeting. I'm like, what's this meeting? He's like, it's essentially a party. We're gonna hang out and we're gonna drink a bunch of juice and uh, you could also make money and it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be like, we're gonna be like Red Bull girls, except sexier and make money. And I'm like, what? So I ended up showing up and, and it was completely weird because you know, I wanted to make money because that was the biggest thing, right? I was like, okay, I, I'm a broke college student. I can't pay for the bills. I can't help my mom and dad. My mom and dad are completely stressed. I want to make more money. And this, here's this person saying that I can make money like promoting this juice, basically like a Red Bull girl, but sex. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go. So I literally sit down at this place and I remember it was like in this little cafeteria side room, meeting hall or whatever. And there were all these chairs like lined up and there were some people that were really excited. There was a lot of people that were just completely confused. I kind of sat right in the middle. So as I sat down, you know, people are up telling their stories, their whys, they're, they're like, oh my God, I'm doing this for my family, I'm doing this because I wanna travel, I'm doing this because I'm in a bunch of debt, I'm doing this because I'm severely depressed, I'm doing this because I wanna pay for my college tuition. And as they're doing it, I'm like, okay, like it started resonating a lot with me because of course, here I am, broke college student, all these experiences really resonated with me. And then, they go and edify this guy that makes $7,000 per month as a 22 year old, 24 year year old college dropout. That was the moment that I was like, okay, I don't care what everyone else said, I'm gonna listen to what this guy said. And of course this guy was an exact mirror to all the things that I was insecure about myself. I mean, he was successful, he had bigger biceps than me, he was traveling around the world, he had an E-class Mercedes. And here I was with a Honda Civic, broke as a joke, broke, busted, and disgusted, completely unhappy. So I listened to him, right? And you know, they sell you under this dream and this lifestyle and this vision of you making money in your sleep and never have to work a day in your life for the rest of your life. So here I was, I was like, I'm down. I was like, where do I sign up? They're like, oh, it's $500. I was like, uh, I don't know about the money. And the funny thing is I did have the money, but you know, I was just too afraid to lose that money. But nonetheless, you know, I ended up convincing one of my friends I was there too that kind of like got hijacked into this meeting with me and I was like, hey, let's just go have these. So that way we can make money together, but also we could kind of like mitigate our risk. So we ended up coming in, it was like a $500 pack and whatnot. And that's when we started realizing what the actual business was, right? So essentially for the first week or two, they're like, you know what? You guys have to go up to all of your friends and just invite them to the sober party. We're gonna go do the pitching for you guys and if they make money or if they sign up, then you make the money. So I was like, okay, that, that's it. That's literally essentially what I did. You know, I, I remember calling up some of my high school best friends, 
people that I met at the basketball center, uh, people that I met at the gym, people that I met in like science class and biology, childhood friends, like people that I haven't talked to in 10 years, cousins. And this kind of led, and for the next two weeks after the initial one week of learning, that's literally what I did. We were just doing home events and getting on calls and whatnot. And the weirdest thing happened in the next two weeks. You know, here were, I think, all of the people that I was really close with, and then all the people that were kind of, you know, distant acquaintances. And just getting on the calls and, and the home events and conversations with them started doing interesting things to my psychology, right? Because as I showed each person and each person and each person, I started getting rejected and rejected it again and rejected it again and again. And, you know, uh, sometimes someone would say yes and they would sign up. Sometimes they would say yes, sign up, and then somebody would be like, dude, that's stupid, that's a scam or whatever, and then they would just like end up quitting. And then for the next couple of weeks, man, it was like this, this yo-yo, feeling good and then feeling depressed and then all of your friends judging you. And then the, I think the worst thing that happened was I remember I had like the best of friends, right? Actually the friend that I went halvesies uh, to get into this network marketing company. He ended up not liking it as much and he essentially wanted to like have me buy his way out because we were making already enough money to break even in the first couple of weeks. Um, so I literally bought his half out and we kind of just like split up. And it kind of sucked because he was like my best friend for the longest time. And when we split up on the business idea, he ended up just going back behind my back and talking really bad things behind my back to all of like my friends, my fraternity brothers, all the people that I was close with in college. And that's where it started getting very, very toxic, I think for me, right? Because I, I came to college to reinvent myself, to get more confident, to get more social skills, to really find out who I am, right, as an adult. I didn't want to be like the little boy that I was getting into college. And you know, the first couple of months, I, I started gaining like popularity, people started knowing who I was, I started feeling good about myself, I started feeling more confident about myself. And just like that, within already like the second or third week of network marketing, all of that was taken away from me. All of the people that thought I was cool thought I was a complete idiot. All of like my best friends that I had thought I was like a horrible human being. Even like some of my family members that I was like in this to really help out and to provide and even like my girlfriend at the time to really make enough to make sure that we'd be able to travel and to see the world and to do all these cool things that I'm actually doing now, thought I have just completely lost my mind. And I remember I was kind of like in this crossroads where I either had to accept the fact that maybe I shouldn't do network marketing and I should just go back down this regular life or to go against the grain, against everyone else's judgment against me and to say no, I'm gonna plant my flag here and I'm gonna do this until I succeed. And I chose the latter because one thing that it did for me was started to ask me questions of what do I actually wanna do with my life? What do I wanna spend my time doing? Do I actually wanna become a dentist because I love it or just because I thought it was a good job that I could pay the bills? And the more I asked myself why, I think that's what started opening up this new possibility for life where when I would close my eyes, I would see exactly the life I could have lived. I mean, traveling around the world, speaking on stages, motivating people, networking with some of the smartest human beings in the world, making more money, making real passive income, helping my mom and dad to literally look at my mom and my dad in the face to realize that they never have to worry about money again. I would constantly visualize that little picture in my mind until it would burn itself into my subconscious mind. It was at that point where I was so into the Kool-Aid where literally everyone around me hated me. And I think this was week number four and I literally had to stomach that, I guess, for the next year and a half while I stayed in college. I think every month after that, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And it was also around that time where, you know, my life just got more and more depressed. My girlfriend thought I was crazy. My family thought I was crazy. But what it started doing was it started, I think, giving me more spiritual strength, you know, because it was, it was like, I've never been this emotionally low in my life. I've never experienced this. I did not know what to expect. But here I was as an 18, 19 year old kid experiencing extreme ridicule, depression, sadness, anxiety, and just like ousted from my entire social circle. I had no idea who I was anymore. I had this, I like lost identity. I, I didn't, I had no idea who I was. And I think it was a feeling that I think most people don't feel or experience until they're late in their late thirties or forties or fifties. 
you know, people talk about like midlife crises or people cheating on their husbands or wives or people getting like the new BMW or the Mercedes when they're 50 just because they're like, oh my God, I need to do something because I'm at the end of my life. I think I literally felt that when I was like 18 or 19. And it forced me to reinvent myself. You know, when you literally hit to the lowest of lows where you literally have to drink like seven to eight shots of tequila just to talk to people that used to be your best friends, you know, you only really go up from there, right? And I think those 30 days, what it showed me, especially when I first got started in network marketing, is it started to make me realize that happiness and self-worth actually comes from how I view myself instead of how others viewed me. Because here I was, you know, my entire life, my identity was defined by how the people in my social surrounding was viewing me. Now, when my entire social surrounding and setting was viewing me at a negative, horrible human being, I had to be able to look inside myself to see who I actually was and to go in that direction, even though there was nothing around me in my present reality to show the fact that I could actually succeed. And uh, of course, you know, the network marketing company ended up shutting down. And even though that was depressing for a lot of people, one thing that it did give me was an entrepreneurship mindset that allowed me to succeed in any venture that I did. You know, because nothing will ever feel as bad of the pain that I felt in that period of time where the entire world was around me, was against me. And it's what gave me the spiritual strength that I think is the most valuable thing that I've taken away from it. And you know, it's actually really funny because I talked to some people that were also network marketing, right? I, I mean, I'm here in Bali and I have a lot of friends that are into real estate, into, you know, uh, informational products, into sales, into phone sales, into marketing businesses. A lot of people have like agencies. A lot of them are doing really well, right? So well many six figures, many seven figures, some are even eight figure entrepreneurs. And I asked them, I was like, okay, well, after we get into the conversation, because it's also a little thing that's embarrassing to say that you did, I think. You know, uh, I remember I went through this period of time where I was embarrassed if someone found out that I did network marketing as a younger person because it would remind me of all of the negative emotions that I felt and all the ridicule that I felt from all of my close ones. And I didn't want to be ridiculed by the people that I would meet. But when I started talking to them and just sharing more of my past of what I actually went through, all of the things that I've learned, I started realizing that a lot of people here also did network marketing in the past. Did all of them become successful? Maybe 99.9% .9 failed. I know one guy that made over a million dollars a year with network marketing. He's a really cool guy. We did a podcast a couple, like a year or two back. But most of the time, a lot of the successful people that I met had their virginity broken, their entrepreneurship virginity broken in, in, in network marketing. Same thing with, I think, Robert Kiyosaki's wife. A lot of people get started in at least opening up their mind to personal development and self-growth and to become addicted to that. And I think that's the biggest thing that changed for me. Once I went through all of the depression and the anxiety and the ridicule for my loved ones, I started learning how to develop internal confidence within myself that was no longer dependent on an external reality. If you're in that position now, or even if you're not in network marketing, you're like, man, I don't know why I clicked on this video. I just wanted to hear Mike rant for a bit. Just understand that when you're going through tough times, that doesn't break you. That makes you grow. It's those challenges and, and the negativity and the ridicule that we face actually what gets us stronger inside to prepare us for the next opportunity that is coming in front of our door. And I'm telling this right now, like I don't think I would have been successful in my other endeavors had I been not able to overcome all that adversity that I felt when I was in the 18, 19 years is of age when I was like in network marketing. And that's really it. What's your uh, experience with network marketing? Comment below. And also if you wanna check out all of the podcasts, make sure you check it out in the link below as well or subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join this week's free workshop where it is the fastest and easiest way to make money online, even faster than network marketing. We have a 62 year old woman that made over 160 grand in 90 days. Check it out in the link below. With that being said, I love you guys. Namaste, peace out. Ew.